Black and Radio. Broadcasting straight from Osaka, Japan. Exclusive interviews, talk shows, DJ sessions. Check it out. Hello, uh, this is your host um, of Black History Month talk show, DL, coming to you from Black Can Radio. Today we have a Black History Month talk show, uh, four segments. The first segment uh, based on music, second segment, women's panel, third segment, history panel, fourth segment, business panel. We're going to kick off uh, this part of the show, music panel, with three uh, other guests. And um, I'd like to first introduce, have each uh, person introduce themselves. Start with uh, PJ. How you doing? I'm PJ3 from Western New York, Buffalo. And um, I'm a professional musician here. been working in Japan for about maybe 12, 13 years. And um, uh, I like long walks on the beach. And <laughs> 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 What, what's your zodiac sign? <laughs> yeah, that's about the size of it. I do music production, engineering. I've been working with uh, quite a few artists over the years. So, name a few: Joe Sample, um, uh, uh, Neville Brothers. Uh, uh, quite a few, you know. Just I've just been blessed, putting good situations, and um, I'm here in Japan trying to work my magic here as an independent producer, songwriter, and producer, and. Uh, Independent artists. Okay. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Next, Alicia. Hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Saldana, and I'm from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And I've been in Japan for over 10 years now. I came as a student. I originally came actually to do, I was interested in Japanese theater because. When I was a teenager in Trinidad, I did a lot of musicals, and I was really fascinated by kabuki and no and so on. And then by the time I actually got to Japan, I was singing jazz and soul, and, but that's, that's why I was initially interested. In. And here I sing, I write, I write my own music, I perform with my band, and I'm a lecturer at university as well. So you, you said you did theater, actually acting or? Yes, oh, acting really? and singing and a little dancing a long time ago. Yeah, I haven't seen you act. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you got to set up something while you're doing some acting. Okay. Yeah. All right, no. Okay, thank you and thank welcome you. aboard. Thank you. And CB. Uh, yes, so I'm CB um, from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, the Navy brought me here, so about 25 years ago, I was in Yokosuka. Um, two wars later, Resigned in uh, Seattle, then I came back over here to uh, Nishinomiya. So, um, the music, music, I always been in my heart. Um, I started by a digital producer, so producing my own music digitally. Um, I have three CDs on iTunes, uh, Amazon, uh, one jazz, and two house. So, uh, yeah, like PJ said, it's. Um, being an independent producer, uh, DJ, it's uh, quite a journey. So mm -hmm. that's me. Okay. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Yes. And myself, um, I am a drummer by trade, a professional drummer, 25 years. I moved to Japan in 2001 and I started my own music company in 93 in North Carolina. And I restarted it here in Japan in 2006. And um, I currently work as a booking agency and um, PA company providing booking and PA services to musicians in the area. Well, I'd like to first get started by tackling something that has been kind of... Um, it's been in existence for Japan for a long time. But it recently has come to my attention and it's recently gotten kind of a big explosion on the internet and that is um, excuse me, a group that uh, is very well known they've been performing in Japan the group of Japanese musicians called Rats and Star and they basically to appreciate to celebrate black music and black culture they perform in blackface blackface for those of you who don't know is basically coloring your face 
with dark makeup to appear to be black and they put on performances Japanese people love them they've been doing this for years and years and years however uh, my personal opinion is they are not doing it to offend blacks at all they're doing it out of ignorance which a lot of stuff is done in Japan out of ignorance of other cultures um, what in your opinion do you think black musicians like ourselves and producers and people who have a voice to some extent can do to defeat this ignorance to educate people to get this out of the way put to bed and, and finished yeah well I'm glad we are talking about this right now because I've had a problem with this from the, since I've been here in Japan <laughs> and I'm glad we can finally grapple this uh -huh. and um to me, um, well, if, b b before you start, if you can just mention what does blackface like? If you see it, what, what well, does that mean to you? Well, historically, um, you know, my father he wasn't much of a musician, but he was a big radio and record collector and stuff like that. And he, he knew a lot about um, the history of American radio, and uh, the whole blackface came about when uh, Amos and Andy went from radio to television. Mm -hmm. And um, since at that time uh, in America, uh, there were no black performers on, on TV pretty much, except for, you know, very really subdued or really racially kind of connot connotized uh, roles, like a maid or something like that. And it was all stere stere stereotypical right. roles. Right. So, but Amos and Andy was considered uh, groundbreaking because they were uh, white comics that talked about black lifestyles and dealt with black issues and blackface. Right. But, um, and actually they had a lot of black listeners and a lot of black people who were watching them because at that point, we had no one to identify to or to uh, to our existence or 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 our imagery of us on television except for them and the few people that did got a chance to get some breaks to get in and get into the media and to me that's disheartening because at the point where you know there was a part of history that we can't change that happened mm -hmm. you know but the whole point is is to educate people about how degrading that was because there could have probably been, even though a lot of the stuff, the material was really stereotypical, it probably could have been black actors chosen for those to roles. To do those roles. To right. do those right. roles right. instead of having a white man, two white men dressed in blackface. Acting like that. Acting like ones. that, right. you know. Right. so. It always graded me in a wrong, a, a wrong way. My father's from Tennessee. My mom's from the South too. So it was like, you know, the stories he used to tell me growing up. Uh, you know, like laws of the Jim Crow laws. You know, right. he grew up post, post <laughs> World sure, War Two, sure. so he was born yeah. in '45. So he he grew up in the '50s when all that stuff was very prominent. Mm -hmm. You know, the reckless eyeballing law and stuff like that. If you looked at a white man for longer than three seconds, you possibly to get beat down or lynched. Right. Yeah. You know, that's what made him move from Tennessee to, to the north, to, to, to New York. Well, I, I'd like to ask Alicia, since you didn't really grow, formally grow up in the state, well, since you didn't grow up in the state, <laughs> um, how much of this is aware in your culture? Um, yeah, we, I was trying to think about whether I know of any examples of blackface mm -hmm. in, in Trinidad and honestly I don't, I'd have to do some research but of course I know about what happened in the United States uh -huh. and, and what happened to you know the, the slaves and, and right. the descendants of the slaves right. in other parts of the world so even though I was in there and I didn't experience it I still of course have an emotional connection to to the people and when I see something like that it's it's really upsetting mm -hmm. and and I understand that like you said it's prob probably not done with any sort of malicious intent, intent right. and I understand 
because I've been doing some research about you know how blackface started in Japan and it <laughs> seems that the Americans brought it when when they came because you know this was back at the time of the Jim Crow when all of this was very normal right. and so the Japanese received this as something that was quite normal and and I understand that back then but Japan hasn't been you know cut off from the rest of the world it's not on another planet so I think after all of this time there there must be enough people in this country who know that the United States had a very terrible and painful history mm -hmm. with discrimination and and you know it's it's really sad that this is still happening mm. and to go back to your original question about what we can do as artists to educate okay. people I okay. think that's a, a good question because I, you know, looking at the news, not just about what's happening in Japan, but what's happening in the United States with black people being killed for sport by the, the, the police mm -hmm. and all of these things. It's upsetting to me that a lot of artists today say nothing about right. it and right. do nothing right. about it. With, you know, with the pla the, the platform they have a platform right. to do and say something. Much it's a very artists, yes. powerful platform. Right. But so many people seem to be just in their own world and, and making their money and, you know, swimming and, and, and dining on their yachts and with all of their girls, who they don't call girls, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they don't seem to care what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when you think that we have the opportunities we have today because of, of people them. who who did something with their platform, I mean, right. you think about... Harry Belafonte mm -hmm. and Sidney Poitier and mm -hmm. all of these people, Houston, right? Mm -hmm. And and what what's going on today? So I, I really feel it's it's our obligation to, to say something, something yes. and do something right. as artists. Right. I really so feel true. that. CB, um, that's wow. That's deep, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought she was just going to take it easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw you over there bubbling. <laughs> I, I told you this it. topic would make me you feel know. a certain kind of way too. Well, I got yeah. two points on it. Uh, looking at the window, I see Ray Charles, right? Mm. And he he stood up. You know, he did not play in jo uh, Georgia mm. because of the Jim Crow laws. Right. And people are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. They're not. Someone said something about Michael Jordan. And he was like, well, I don't sell my shoes to yeah, poor people. I saw that. I saw that. Poor people buy it. It's so yes. disappointing. Right? Mm -hmm. So for him to say that, I'm like, wow. Uh, so uh, two things come to mind with blackface. First thing is uh, Sambo. Yes, yes. yes. Sambo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sambo was a little character. Yeah. And in the South... Uh, from from Georgia, all over the South, they had a little statue. Mm -hmm. So you could, yeah, the little hand. Yeah, right, right. he was holding he was holding up the dinner, <laughs> dinner plate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, in front of their lawns. Wow. So yeah, the, they were often called lawn jockeys. Yeah, lawn jockeys wow. or gnomes yes. Yes. before they were called gnomes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. well, yeah. We used to call them uh, like like a sambo doll. So uh, you could tell who was racist in your neighborhood. Wow. So you stayed away from them. Huh. Mm -hmm. So for me, I saw that statue. That means they have their white sheets in their closet. Mm -hmm. That's how the, the South was. Um, mm -hmm. So when I when I went to uh, nursery school, mm -hmm. um, they still had the plaques. You could see white only, black only. They just painted over it. Right. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'm telling my age, but I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated in 1990. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the second thing, uh, in Japan. Japan, when the military came over, um, they used to have this cartoon doll or something, which had a black face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was comical for them. Right, right. Um, that, that whole idea. Yeah, concept, the whole right? idea. Right. Then you go to the uh, Southern All Stars. Yes, they did the blackface too. Yes, mm. I didn't know that. Oh yes, yeah, this yes, is back yes. in the nineties. Yes. Them, yeah. them and the Gospelers. Yes, the yes. Gospelers. I know about the Gospelers. Yes. Yeah, but so I didn't know. Southern yeah. All Stars did this like in maybe ninety two or ninety three, and I was like, wow, the music is good. I would mm -hmm. never listen to them again. Right. So, right. Right. Um, it's truly, yeah, technology is vast. But this is a very closed 
society. country. Yes. Yeah, society, yes. country. And you ask me, they're still stuck. Oh, yeah, of in course. In the 60s. Yeah, well, no, no. When it comes to America. Stuck in slapstick. And, and yeah. Other things. yeah so. Well, I, I, I would like to make a suggestion, and it's something, especially in Japan, because in Japan, if you create a controversy, you're going to get a back slap. Right. Mm-hmm. So, in looking at that, I think as black artists, as black people who have a platform, be it just singing on stage or performing, in the appropriate situation, not in a hotel mm-hmm. gig or anything, but just mention, for example, oh, you know, um, who likes Rats and Star? <laughs> Anybody? Mm-hmm. Okay, but their music's cool, but Personally, me as an, a black American, I appreciate what they're doing, but I don't like the black faced makeup. Right. If you like it, that's fine. Just me personally, I'm offended and I really wish they would stop. You know, right. that, that's just how I feel about it. Mm. My next song is And <laughs> Move On. <laughs> I got one on note on that. Was that. Like, yeah. I got one note. Um, just maybe two weeks ago. So I was teaching, I, I was teaching, and uh, this kid started touching my hand, mm-hmm. you know? So I knew he hadn't seen a black person. <laughs> so I said, I was like, hey, it doesn't come off. <laughs> so I put his face against my face. I was like, ah. Uh. So he started screaming. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. I guess they think it's going to wash off. Mm-hmm. Or it's That's gonna, incredible. yeah. 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 So yeah. I think it's all about the education. They're yes, just yes. so Definitely. uneducated, Definitely. right? Uh, so and again, it, it's it's not necessarily a negative due to a negative thing. Right. It's just it's a closed society. Right. Yes, it's, and a it's, closed, it's, yeah. it's a closed society. I agree, and and I see that with my students because I said I lecture at university, right, and right. sometimes it's quite shocking how little the, the, my students know, yeah. know about the, the rest Mandela? of the world. Right. Which Don't is why I started Mandela. my exactly. Nelson Mandela Festival, right. Freedom yeah. Fest Japan. When he was ill, because mm. he hadn't passed away as yeah. but he was he was pretty ill and so I was um, and it was Nelson Mandela Day mm-hmm. and I asked my students about him and I was horrified to realize they didn't know mm-hmm. you know so then I got the idea of, of this festival so I think this is one one way that I try to do something. educate sure yes right, sure, with sure. this festival it, right. it's it's not just about music we have movie nights mm-hmm. we have art exhibitions sure, sure, and right, so on right. to encourage discussion and conversation and so on so but so yes I, I know that a lot of people actually don't know much about history or the outside world exactly. a lot of them don't even know their own history mm. That's right mm. but mm. on the other hand you do have people who are educated who yeah. know exactly what they're doing like that woman who wrote recently to the, yes, prime, minister to the prime minister that about, about we should japan should adopt the system of apartheid, apartheid to yeah. deal with immigrants coming into the country yeah. in the yeah. future that is inexcusable it's yeah. inexcusable it's okay. inexcusable. However, however, you've got it in every country. Right, so, that's true. You got it in every country. I know you've got it in yeah. every country. Right. But the point is, she is not someone who is uneducated. Right. She knows. She knows. You know what I mean? Right. So that that just lets you know. So it's it's not it's not just a case of naive people who don't sure. know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think there's more to it than that. Right. Yeah, and then and then I think there's also. Uh, 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 a missing he, element he, here. Yeah, I'm, think, I'm just thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. There's a missing element here of social decorum mm-hmm. that 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 kind of uh, gets bypassed a lot um, because of how this, it's it's a huge it's really a skewed thing because there's a lot of things that are westernized about Japan because of Western civilization, and then there's a lot of things that are are. Um, I, Japanese. Uh, this uh, there might be a bad way to put it, but <laughs> I always say if you want to survive here, there's a right way, there's a wrong way, and there's, and there's a Japanese, Japanese way. And, <laughs> and if you learn the Japanese way, you'll you'll get you'll get, you'll, you'll get you'll a get little bit further. Right. And um, right. I think that needs to be addressed okay. because just because it's a Japanese way of doing things, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right of right course. way of doing things. And and that's not a knock against the culture, but mm. I think it's a social decorum. Uh, that that needs to be addressed, addressed, or, or uh, addressed. at least put in the forefront more often than not, because Japanese people tend to not talk about 
those things because they they're they're they'll they'll rather shut down or sure. or be sure. intro, introverted yeah. about certain things and not you know not open up open up. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to move on to the second topic, which is um, so let, let me review again. Uh, how long have you been in Japan? The TV wow. total mm-hmm. almost like twenty years. Twenty years. Okay, and Alicia is ten. Over ten. That's over 10. all I'm gonna admit. Oh, okay, yeah, ten. <laughs> over ten. What did I say? Around <laughs> ten. 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 And I'm at least over twelve, coming back and forth. Uh, okay. Yeah, about okay. about twelve. <laughs> and myself, almost fifteen. <laughs> now, um, so ten years in Kanto, and almost ten years here in Kanto. Okay. And I can tell you something. It's a different world. Oh yeah, of course. Mm, of course. Yes, yeah. yes. I know. Yeah. I lived in Yokohama, Definitely. so I know exactly. Especially for about. black people. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. well, in what way? well, wait, look, let me let, let me go in and, and, <laughs> and put it. Uh, bring up the second uh, second topic. So, um, looking at challenges that you faced living here in Japan, not just doing music, but uh, it could be music or just in general, living as a black musician slash person here mm-hmm. in Japan. What do you think has been your biggest challenge, uh, CB? Wow, um, my skin. Just, just color in general. Color. I mean, you know, uh, people here. Like, uh, I catch my train every day, go to work. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, oh wow, you're here, and I'm like, this is my train, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I hear this every day, so it's very um, nerve wracking how okay. Okay. Uh, they they address the color issue. But uh, music, me and PJ was talking about it earlier, just how um, it's very close. It's, it's very close trying to uh, make a splash, but uh, there's other ways to achieve your goal. Meaning like a, a backdoor kind of? Ah, uh, yes, door without way. a doubt. Okay, yeah. okay. If you can really t- just touch very quickly <clears throat> on what, like, what, what would be a backdoor? Uh, Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amen. You know, so Amen. don't even think inside this little small box. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, so blow up um, in Europe first, and then yes, mm-hmm. and and now we have technology. Mm-hmm. So um, I have a couple of projects going on now. So basically, uh, I put all my music in this one spot, and I'm trying to do more with it for as uh, uh, commercials or movies mm-hmm. or um, uh, elevator music or shopping mm-hmm. and cafe music. Mm-hmm. So it's a different venue. Okay. Right. So if you stay here, you get frustrated. Right. Exactly. And yeah. that is definitely true. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so true. Right. Okay. Uh, who wants to be up next? Well, you, what you said about Europe, I'll chime in on that because um, l- this past September I put out my EP. I, I've always worked with a lot of different artists on the production side, behind the scenes either as a ranger or, or composer or, or you know producer or, or just somebody in the back programming but I finally decided okay I'm gonna do my own thing so uh, a friend of mine suggested man you know with the kind of R&B that you're doing you'd be better off sending it to the UK first okay. than to try to establish something here first uh-huh. yes. and he was absolutely right because I got so much love over there I got lot of radio play okay I'm trying to set up something to go over there this year but before the end of this year to maybe do a little tour or mm-hmm. a mini tour with other artists okay. so um just uh, get, the, get just to the, like and, and like and like like CB said before the tech the technology has changed so um, we can be a little bit more independent from the machine okay that mm-hmm. that runs things here I mean there there are there are instances where you know having some money to be able to buy shelf space or this and that in some of the local record stores can make a difference in um, projected uh, promotion. But at the end of the day, that that line is being skewed every year because more there's more stuff coming online. And, right, and, right, right, right. So to the point where, um, like in the States, for example, Tower Records doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, They've right been on. closed almost 10, 15 years in the States. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the um, merchandising, what we're doing online now, can can kind of help us compete. Mm-hmm. So go, go worldwide first yeah. and then yeah, go to Japan. Yeah, yeah. And then come back here. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because we, we haven't seen each other in a while and we haven't <laughs> we didn't talk about this, but that's exactly what I'm doing this year. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah. because i was in the frustrated place you know mm-hmm. where yes, it's you like was. you know because uh really japan 
I mean, Japan was great for me for my education. I finished school. It was a great place to start my band, start doing my original music, and and it was wonderful the way people received it, even though it was in English and they were original songs, you know. So that's been great. But there is there is a glass ceiling here mm -hmm. for foreign independent musicians. If you're not signed with a a Japanese major label. Yes. There's really only so much you can do, and especially if you're in Osaka, there may be a little more leg room in Tokyo, right. but yeah. here, not much so. It's right? Say. So, so I'm working on a new project. It's all. It's very different to the music I did before. It's right. all hip hop and electronic dance music nice. and Caribbean dance music. Uh -huh. Okay. And <laughs> I'm producing my own music. Uh -huh. I'm doing everything myself because uh -huh. I have no money. <laughs> And I'm I planning to release it in, uh, in Europe, not, uh, you know, because that that's the thing. You um, My advice to someone wanting to come here would be get something out outside first because you get more help and, and uh, Japan is a lot friendlier when you come from outside right. than when you're mm -hmm. trying to establish from yourself. From the inside. Yeah. yeah. I think there are... There are models, business models for the, the record companies here. There's a model for, of course, it's based, it's for Japanese people, I think, first of all. It's for Japanese artists. If you're a foreigner, there are like two or three boxes. There's one for the Japanese, the foreigner who has some sort of connection to Japan, maybe a grandmother, or, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. And, father. Right, or father, mother. they're half. Or something like this, and then you you sing some kind of Japanese music in Japanese. A, a record label will go for that. So yes. you have people singing enka, for example, in right. hip hop clothes. Right. Or, Basically, it's, right? it's marketable. It's to the marketable. Japanese public. Okay. Or there's a box for if you're you have product outside and you have a distribution deal in Japan yes. okay but there is no box and I've had this conversation with lots of people at different record companies there's no box for the foreigner who's here who's doing original music not necessarily in Japanese they don't have a box for that they don't know how to sell you how to promote of course. you of course. you they know don't. and no That's one's true. willing to take the trouble to figure it out they have one yeah. I, I would talk to you about okay. it. Uh, my, one of my okay. friends in the Navy, uh, D. Loach, I hope you're watching. <laughs> uh, his wife in Tokyo did it in the early 90s. All right. Yeah. And that was the early and 90s. Original, yeah. That was well, the early okay, 90s. That was, music. that was like from uh, oh, R&B. Mm -hmm. So, so R&B okay. uh, from... Well, yeah, you have to tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, I can we'll tell talk, you. We'll talk off the <laughs> yes. yeah. It's show. just a totally different market when you're talking about Osaka. Right. Yeah, yeah. Kansai the, the, the Kansai area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I get... Um, it Recently, it's kind of picked up, but basically, for the last... Since I started my company in 2006, mm. uh, on average, basically, one month, maybe 30 emails from musicians from overseas right. interested in coming to Japan most of them to tour a couple of them uh, want to move here mm. but um, basically what I tell them and I'll say it again and again and again you come to Japan without a found fan base don't do it right. just right. skip right. Japan yeah. and go to China or Korea right. because mm -hmm. Japan is not what you think it is right. <laughs> exactly. you have to tell them good luck uh, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. not what you think um, for me personally my experience living in Japan I honestly and I tell my uh, relatives and friends this I have not encountered any blatant hurdles or challenges become because of my skin color mm. Every challenge that I've faced is because I am not Japanese. Japanese. Yes, yes. It's not Bingo. about being black. Or, <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There, there, there are true. some things, some you know, hot springs that won't let you in because you're black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? I've yeah, never yeah, had are. that. Yeah. I've oh never heard that. No, I, 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 I've, I've never had the experience. Uh, but I've you've heard, heard of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in general, so I think the biggest challenge is one understanding the culture and how to get into the back door because yes. you're not going to get in the front door no. No. you will not get in the front door no. so any musicians that are considering coming to japan be it a tour or to move here um regardless of whether you're your skin color you need to one know the language you don't have to speak it fluently but know the language mm. know the business and know the culture yeah. right. those three things will get you f a lot further than if you and just have come. connections here because yes. 
you know, especially since most of the live music spots have absolutely, totally given up any responsibility uh, to promote, promote their, yes. their, their, their shows. Yes. Sure enough. I oh, don't God. understand that business model. I'm going either. to open a live music spot, but I am not going to not promote, gonna promote it, it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, that's yeah. what, that's I've what they do. I've been dealing with that for the last couple right? of years. Yeah. It's like, wow. So if you're coming from outside and no one knows you here, you know, right. so you have to make connections with people who are here and who are performing mm, yep. here or companies like yours mm. that is either specifically do Represent that. Right. right. Otherwise, yeah. it's it's really tough. And I just started my LLC already. Um, so it just came into effect uh, um, this the end of this month. So it's in effect, but it's in the, it's in the, actually the uh, it's based out of New York State. Right. But I'm gonna have a subsidy company of it here in okay. in Japan, and I'm it's called Percy Jones Music Company. It's easier to do it in your name anyway. It's, mm -hmm. it's easy to clear. Right. But um, I did that because I wanted to be able to uh, go after some of these corporate jobs that they have the, where they do BGM and different things. Mm -hmm. And um, they use, you know, music and different music for different types of uh, mediums. Because I think a lot of that, we, we miss out on that mm -hmm. because of the fact um, that we we don't have companies, and that that's the first right. thing they'll exactly. throw in your face. Yes. Exactly. Even if you have the talent already, you've got to have somebody. You got to have a, a, either you. somebody representing you, or you have your own company. Right. Right. So right. if you have that, I think then, and and you're coming with you know material, then maybe you can make the playing field a little more even competitive. Right. You know, right. and that's what I want to do. I just want to be able to compete. Right. I don't because I, I hear a lot of the stuff that that, that they release on. Um, on these different mediums of background music and stuff, I'm like, I, it's a I, joke. I'm like, I can do that. I do right. done music like this in my sleep, sure, right. you know. So it's like, okay, how can I get into that? And then I did some research on it. And I was like, okay, either you have to have your own company, mm -hmm. or you have to know somebody to, to, that's gonna walk you in and represent exactly. you as an right. agency. Exactly. And the agencies here, ooh, let's get into that. Yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh. Well, well, see, that was the thing I was looking at, right? So I DJ, but my my background is producing. So okay. I'm, I've been going from the producing side for almost day one. Right. And it's kind of like the uh, their film producer. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? Takashi? So he made a big, uh, big thing about last year about how the film industry. If you're not from this film industry, you're, you're not, not getting, getting any awards, exactly. mm -hmm. right? Okay. So it's the same. If you're not from this music uh, uh, industry, mm -hmm. uh, you're not getting in there. Right. right. They right. just right. they're gonna block you out. Exactly. Right. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd like to take um, a quick commercial break, and uh, we'll be right back. Right, uh, we're back with uh, Black History Month talk show and music panel version, and we were talking about um, breaking into the music industry uh, as a non-Japanese, as a foreigner here. Uh, third topic, I'd like to move on oh, to. Oh, sorry, can I oh, just? There's one, one thing I wanted one to more say. Point? Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. just um, sort of something that uh, you said earlier about. Um, yeah, the the system is is closed if you're thank you if you are not Japanese, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not signed to a Japanese label, in which case most likely you have to do what they want and sing what 
what they want you to sing you know but if you want to do your own you have your original music you want to do and especially if you want to do it in your own language <laughs> I think like you said you, you have to build your own way you can't you can't rely on this system so you're talking about <laughs> companies no <laughs> or exactly there is no system so you, have to create your own you way. know your own company and and you as well you know you started your own company your um, the Kansai music conference you know those are the sort of things that we need to do and, and to work together to establish these sorts of avenues for ourselves because and no one is going to do it for us and everyone Tips off to Louis for Black yes, Pan exactly, Radio. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. the example. Real. Exactly. That, this, this is a great example of exactly. what you're talking exactly. about. Right? Exactly. This is exactly. what we need. We need more of this. We need more working together to to create these opportunities because no one else is going to do it. For exactly. us. And you can say, you know, right now, this is the groundwork. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Well, we got it. Now we leave here. We got to get it together <laughs> somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Because, that's true. Right. Um, you know, all of us got a different ideas, mm -hmm. and, and we put it together, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think another thing has to do with it is the economical situation of Japan. Mm -hmm. If you're a new artist, they want that 100% of your copyright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't think I want to give that up. Yeah. No, me neither. Ooh, yes. Mm -hmm. right. um, there's a phrase called black music. Yeah. Now, first off, I just have to ask. It, it, I don't want to say offensive, but it, are you cool with that? It, it's it's the whole thing is because I, I I googled it. It's not just in Japan. It, it's a common word. Yeah, black music. Black music yeah. It, I mean, are, are you cool with that? I'm totally cool with that. I mean, if it's a, it's going to be um an easier way for people to um to find out or express what it was because uh. I think it's uh, definitely a step above what they used to call it back in the day. They used to call it race records, remember? <laughs> in the 40s and 50s, they, they and they, they wouldn't they wouldn't play it on the radio, right. or there'd be only selected radios. Right. We got that new race record from blah 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 blah. blah. All the radios was country music. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All the radio music, uh, all the radio stations was country music, yeah. so they didn't want to play it. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, uh, Alicia. I well, for me, it's it's a, it's a little. It's a little problematic uh -huh. because it seems that black music somehow is only American black music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like there are black people in Trinidad and Tobago, you know. That's right, that's right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> there are black people the in Africa, you know. Yeah, I understand the imagery. I <laughs> right? Understand. Right? Totally so understand. black music to me should, you know, but but somehow we're sort of relegated to the world category. <laughs> so it's interesting. But but I understand the need to have some kind of label. Yes. Yeah. For marketing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I look at a totally different concept, aspect, <laughs> how music came from Africa. Right. So, uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's all black music. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is black. <laughs> exactly. It's so all black music. To me, I'm always laughing. They're like, do you like classical? I'm like, of course, that's black music. <laughs> um, do you like gospel? Yeah, that's black music. Yeah. Do you like J-pop? Uh, Y'all cop it? Black music. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, people laugh, but I'm very serious. Right. I'm very serious within myself because music is black. So, um, yes. They should just yes. stop it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Me, me personally, I I come from, I look at myself as a world citizen, mm. and for me, music is beyond racial right. or skin color. It can be divided by ethnicity. That's right. fine. Exactly. Yes. Culturally. Yes. So the, for me, the phrase of black music, you know, music doesn't have any color. You know, blacks play this, they play that, they play this. Mm. African, there's African music, there's Japanese music, there's right. Chinese music, but black music, you know. Right, that, right. Folk, yeah. folk music, right? Yeah, folk so, music, right. Yeah. But, um, so you as a musician living in Japan um, get obviously relegated to that label of black music. But, uh, I, I got one for you. So okay. should call it I'm, a, I'm a DJ, so they assume I play hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which so, is black music. <laughs> right. So I'm like, I can try, but right. I yeah. don't think you want me spinning that. <laughs> or in my case, I, you know, my whole life I I get put into these boxes because when I was younger, people thought, well, why aren't you doing? Oops, why aren't you doing? Um, 
Caribbean music. Mm-hmm. You're from the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. You should be singing calypso mm-hmm. or or reggae. Or, right, right. 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 And and it's like for some reason because I'm from the Caribbean. There was this feeling that you can't sing jazz. Why are you trying to sing jazz? Or why are you trying mm. to why are you trying to do a classical music? And th- that was you know? in, in Japan. No, not not before I came. So oh, I mean, I've been sort of dealing with this forever. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then okay. in Japan, it's like people assume I'm American somehow, mm. yeah, they, right? Exactly. Or and and so and even though I'm doing soul or jazz, I'm not American. And and I have my own style and my own, you know. So right. I'm I'm always dealing with these things. Mm-hmm. I remember doing a show where I had to sing a gospel song, and a Japanese agent looked at me after the rehearsal, and she said, "Elise, you you know your singing is really beautiful. That was wonderful. But um, can you can you be a little more black?" <laughs> What country Whoa. are we in? Can, can, can you be a little more black? When we get off the air, I'm going to the agent. They, they, they tell, can you be the a little more black? That. You know, one of my coworkers <laughs> told me that. They said, uh, Charlie, wow. why you don't talk, uh, CB, why you don't talk uh, black? I'm like, I'm talking, I'm black. So yeah. I, I think people, like you said earlier, the perspective of the hip-hop clothes are that, that uh, stereotype what is black. Yes, yes, indeed. Is not black. Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 You know? And and they often say for me, well, uh, well, you black, you play. Uh, they categorize I should not play techno. Uh, yeah. But my techno is more like the deep. You know, it's a different specific style. But I should be playing hip hop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you know, a lot of people don't know. Like I'm, I'm a composer too. So right, right. now I'm trying to compose um, this. Uh, Three piece of uh, French horn, uh, French horn, tuba, and uh, trombone. Mm. Nice. So people just think, oh well, you you're in this category only, mm. and and that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, so okay. people, you think you had a bad? I had dreads about ten years ago, dog. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah. everybody saw me was like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I had to live with that for, exactly. yeah. for a long time. Right, I was like, right. okay. And this so happened that you know, me being a musician, it was like, oh, okay, it was yeah. piled on even more. You, so you like, are Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mad skills. Well, um, to end the show, um, before you move on to the next part, just reflect on your time here in Japan and say, for example, if you have to move away from Japan maybe within the next five years what do you hope you can contribute to the music scene from your blackness from your experiences being a black person here that's a good question yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go in and speak to that first and give you guys <coughs> a little bit of time okay. um, me personally uh, and I'm sure as all of you know being a foreigner here you especially um, if there aren't a lot of other foreigners around you represent your culture yes. Yes. and so for me I I try to make an impression that I'm an educated person and I don't fit the stereotypical image of black and I speak Japanese and I can battle with a Japanese person, just like a Japanese person. <laughs> so my, I try to put out there that there are people who don't fit your stereotype, right. and yes. I'm one of them. So that's what I work to to portray, to, to put out there. Wow. That's good. That's good. I, I think um, everybody has their own like legacy that they want to leave behind, I guess. But um, I guess what I want to do is just be able to say that I came here and that um, I tried to move the music out of mediocrity and and put it in a situation where um, I would try to work with Japanese artists. I have Japanese uh, members in my band and a a lot of people approach me, some foreigners like, man, what's what's up with that? Mm -hmm. And they were, I was like, these guys are good. You know, they can play. I, I, I want to go, I want to give anybody a chance who can really play. Right. You exactly. can play, you die with me. I don't care if you're green. You know, as long as you a mean thing on what I need you to be on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I need you uh-huh. to be. You uh-huh. know, and um, I just want to be known for being able to 
push past those stereotypes right, as well. Right, you know, right. that you know that we can't all come together as people and work together and play music. and play music right. at, uh, on a on a higher level because there one thing about being here that kind of grates against everything I have been taught as a musician. There's a, a mediocrity here, the gumbado thing. Like I'm like, okay, there's a difference between having and doing it right and gumbate. No, I don't. I don't like that. Right. I, I rather I, I rather we strive to be great right. and strive for excellence. For, and, for, the, for those of you know, for those of you who don't know, a gumbado means like do your best. Yeah, which yeah. means even if you. You know, right. screw it up. You did your right. best. Right, you did your best, and <laughs> and, 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 and I, you know, I, I empathize with people that are that are trying to do what they're doing. But I mean, if you're gonna attempt to do the music that we made so popular, you know, around the world, and then I would expect it to be done on a certain level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't expect anything less from myself. Right. You know, I, I don't want I don't want to say okay. That was great because you, that was great you for tried. a Japanese person. You tried, right? No, I wanted to be great because you were a great performer. Right, right. You know, so I wanted the thing I want to leave is just be able to push past those lines and try to uplift the uh, the whole idea of production performance to a just a higher level and and and, and make make ourselves accountable as well. Okay. You know? Thank you, uh, Lisa. Um, for me, I, I don't think so much in terms of uh, black per se, but I, 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 I really think of myself as a Trinidadian uh, woman here in Japan. There aren't many there aren't many of us here at all. And so I've tried all, all of my time here to really represent Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean to let people know, about about it, you know that um, <clears throat> there's not only Jamaica in the Caribbean. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. there are other islands there too. And yes, we speak English. You know, it's right. my first language. <laughs> we speak English, and uh, and we sing. And we don't only sing Caribbean music. We sing. You know, so I I hope that I'm also just by being who I am, showing people and getting them maybe interested, more interested in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. you know. And the other thing is that, like you, my band, my band is actually mostly Japanese. Yes. And, um, and I've been working with Japanese people for many years. And, and my, my philosophy is always that music makes us one. It's one of the great things about yes. music. You can go anywhere in the world and sing in any language. And as long as you, as long as you're true to the emotion in what you're doing, cool. people will understand it. They will feel it. They will respond to right. it. And so I was able to come to Japan and do my original music in a different language, and and people responded. You know, that's a beautiful thing. Yes. And I hope, if nothing else, that I I leave that message with people right. when I leave. Okay. Nice. Nice. Wow. CBE. Yeah, I'm going to close the show, right? So, uh, <laughs> say the best for last. <laughs> so, you know, it's exactly right. There's no color when it comes to music. Amen. Uh, I would like to start a studio, even a record company, and help people because there's a lot of Japanese people who are, they're, they're feeling the same wrath that we feel. Uh, unless you have a connection or... You know, you're not getting in the door. So I think um, just to understand the concept or how to build a company uh, or leaving a company here so other people can follow behind mm -hmm. and, and let people know, hey, black is good. Right, right, right. And, right. Uh, you know, they need to realize that we're not scary. Oh, yeah. uh, and and our color doesn't wear off. It doesn't <laughs> wear off, you know. It's here to stay. <laughs> exactly. They got to say hello. You know, it's it's funny. I remember I was teaching junior high school the hello song. You say hello mm -hmm. and I say goodbye, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, I walk around and no one speaks to themselves. Right. You know, they, they have the same face. Right, right. But we always say hello. What's hey, up? Right, what's up? Right. Do you know him? No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, hey. It's true. You know? It's our, it's our but, international yeah. greeting where exactly, we go as brothers you know, and sisters. So, we try uh, to greet each other. Always. So I, I think not only for myself, 
but to uh, help other people mm-hmm. while, while I'm going oh, sure. up. Sure, sure. Because I'm going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blow up. They bring, can't stop me right, now. Right, right. That's right. You know, so, bring, bring um, some people along with you. Oh, right. that's, that's right. always. Right. Cool. Well, that's a great way to end it. Um, I would like to, again, thank my guests, yes. PJ, Alicia, and CB. Uh, I'm DL. And thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Black History Month. Uh, Black History, everyone, do some research. Learn who uh, the father of Black History, Carter G. Woodson, yes, Carter is, Woodson. yes, uh, who he was, and why he started Negro History Week. Uh, next will be the women's panel, and Alicia will be host of that. That'll be coming up in 10 minutes. So take care and peace. Peace. God bless. Thank you. Peace. Right. Stay tuned. GreenTimesEducation.com. <laughs> right. I like the way I got that in there. Yeah. yeah. Like All right. Ken. Ken has been running his business in Japan for five years, but lately he's struggling to make profit and attract new customers. Sales decline, profit went down. He's struggling to find new customers. He realized he needs a new strategy before things get from bad to worse. What was his solution? A website. Yes, a bilingual English Japanese website did it. His website attracted new customers. He found new buyers and received constant inquiries from both Japanese and foreign nationals alike. And where did he get his website created? From KCC International Limited in Osaka, Japan. KCC International constructed an effective website for Ken at a reasonable price. Business is booming again. Buyers are ordering and profit is pouring in. Ken made the smart move getting a professional website done. You can get your website created to suit your business style. English, Japanese, or bilingual websites. Call now for rates and more details at 06-6245-7679 or email website at kcc2000.com.